Hey YouTube! Alright, it is time to talk about gender. Um, it's actually kind of surprising that I haven't talked about gender that much on this channel. Um, as people who know me would say that I talk about gender all the time. Uh, but I was particularly inspired to this discussion of binaries and sacred masculine and sacred feminine and do they have any purpose um, after listening to an episode of the Word Witch podcast where the host, Claire, uh, talks with Harvey James uh, of Harvey James Tarot or HJ Tarot on Instagram about gender in the tarot, but also more generally, they both sort of get into talking about um, the ideas of divine or sacred masculine and feminine and other models for that thing um, and whether they're useful or not. And, um, you know, for me, I think when I first in, like first started really working with the tarot about a year ago, I I would say that I was open to the gendered energy, so like I was open to the idea of the kings and the queens in the court, but I did want to kind of mess with them. Like I I didn't want to take them on as gendered energies exactly, but I was okay with there being a difference between um, kings and queens. And to some extent okay with what the difference was as I understood it. Um, I was less comfortable, for a while I've been less comfortable with the idea of sacred masculine feminine. You know, I think I could understand that, okay, this is something that goes beyond human gender and I kind of wanted to understand that and like I wanted to get past my discomfort. As a non-binary trans person I've been found it very hard to work with ideas of masculinity or femininity within myself. Like I've been to, I went to a spiritual co uh, conference at one point years ago and they were talking a lot about sacred feminine and I was trying to be like look nobody's misgendering me, or at least most people aren't misgendering me, like they understand that I'm non-binary, I should be able to access this energy, um, but I was having a lot of trouble with it. And more recently I've become more comfortable if I don't use those words. So some of what came up in the podcast was kind of different ways people have reframed it as like protective versus receptive, or they mention Anna Joy uses um, taking space versus holding space, um, active passive, like whatever, if you rename it, does it then become okay? And I think for me, um, I really liked um, the first time I heard Tess of City Witch use the term Wooner instead of Divine Feminine, and I've started using that in my practice, Lunar and Solar. Um, and it's worked really well for me, but listening to this discussion, you know, I started thinking about whether the, that duality, even Lunar Solar, always makes sense, necessarily. Um, and I don't think it always does. I think that gender is, or even gender in this way, it's a duality and it's a fluidity at the same time. So I don't think that it's completely invalid to look at kind of two poles or I would even say like zones of influence. Um, zones like that have particular characteristics but at the same time it's really disingenuous to pretend like they don't overlap, to pretend like they don't you know, move with each other. Um, I really like, Lindsay Mack talks a lot about the spiral. A lot of people talk a lot about the spiral. And I like that framework. I like the idea of kind of expansion and contraction. You don't necessarily know where the point, where a particular point is. It's not like you've hit lunar or solar energy 100%. Um, I think of it as almost being like trying to put yourself on a map where you don't know where the boundaries of the map are and at the same time they're constantly changing and in flux and are different depending on which angle you're viewing the map from. Um, that's very much, I mean it's kind of like space or deep sea. Like I love the, that idea, I love the idea of gender as a, you know, constellations of the universe because I do think it's kind of like that. I think it's kind of like that in, if you think of 
the idea of divine gender as well, that there's not really two sides, but that the idea of something solar, something lunar might help us to frame things and to use those reference points to then question and acknowledge that the reference points themselves don't always work. Um, it, this makes me think of like early in my own transition, uh, I wrote a post, I'll try to link it below if I can find uh, this post. I had this whole like theory of gender I was trying to do and I had this idea that gender, it, human gender, but in terms of how society genders us, we know gender is a construct. So I had this idea that the way it works is it's almost like a point system that we, we aren't aware of but it's happening around us. That certain characteristics that humans display or that we perceive humans to have in our minds subconsciously, um, we are assigning, we're constantly assigning points in one gender direction or the other or neither for some characteristics. Um, and that certain characteristics weigh really heavily in one direction or another. So like for example, <clears throat> you know, um, a visibly round chest might go very far in the feminine direction, so that it would take a lot to steer us back to an androgynous or masculine, or on the contrary, like a super full beard re reads really masculine to us, and so it would take a whole lot contrary to that for us to gender someone as female. So there's some things that like really push us in one direction, but it, that it's really that our brains are constantly making all these little micro calculations in order to gender someone. Um, I don't know if that framework is totally right, but I think you can, it, it came up to me when I was thinking about how I think of things as a lunar energy or a solar energy. Um, like those two things are definitely different from saying masculine or feminine. I think there are definitely concepts that to me are very solar and also I think society would gender as feminine. So example of that, they kind of talked about this a little bit I think in the podcast is the Empress. Um, to me is a very solar card, um, very bright and giving and creative and generative. Um, to me that's a, that rings in the kind of solar zone, but it's also obviously a very feminine card. Um, and you could say like, huh, okay, so like it, if the Empress is such a creative force, then, um, or even just generally like is creation masculine or feminine? Because sometimes we talk about manifestation and creation as masculine, but given that quite a few of the people who birth babies are women, then where does that fall, right? Or even if you get beyond the sort of old tired reproductive stuff, like all the different ways in which there are female archetypes of production and creation, kind of destabilize that. But even like, even thinking about if you, if you reframe it as lunar solar, um, like is creation a lunar energy or a solar energy. Well, in some ways I think of it as being a solar energy. Uh, you know, the sun um, gives life. Uh, the sun is about things that are external and, and generative in some ways. But then I can also think of kind of a lunar form of creation. Um, if I think about, there's been a lot of talk lately in Sagittarius season, um, in Scorpio season as well about the idea of the void. Uh, the Many Moons workbook recently had a whole thing about the void and that's been coming up for me a lot in tarot readings. Um, this idea of nothingness and the void and blackness as being like the most creative force there is because it's a space of possibility. It's a limitless space out of which anything can form. Um, the void, darkness, like that is very lunar to me, but it is it is also about creation um, in its own way. Or if you think of like the death card, if you think of like um, 
like in some ways that like Scorpio energy is very lunar watery um, it's about death is birth and cleansing fire is creation um, that could be a kind of lunar creation although fire is very solar so as you can see it's like you get a lot of overlapping another example would be like if you think about nurturing um, energy like where does nurturing it energy fall um well i can think of kind of lunar nurturing and solar nurturing but to me they would be very different like the way the high priestess nurtures versus the way the empress nurtures are very different i think they're both nurturing but in a very different way i think sometimes nurturing is giving you space to figure things out yourself and sometimes nurturing is like pulling you down into the deep think of the queens in the tarot a lot of times I think they get flack for being all about nurturing and like why is that a feminine energy and I totally understand the resistance to that um, because it's not necessarily feminine but it's also yeah like I think it, it if we free the queens from gender if we free the queens even from lunar or solar like they they actually are manifestations of nurturing in different ways so the queen of wands might be a more solar or masculine kind of nurturing with her very active magic um and the queen of cups might be more feminine or lunar um you could do the same with swords and pentacles but those aren't fixed categories like i think one of the things that's really interesting about the tarot is getting the, to know the cards and like how do they resonate with you maybe queen of swords resonates with you as a masculine energy or maybe it resonates as it does for me as like a very hard femme energy um like i'm I have a Pinterest board with like inspirations for cards and I'm just collecting for the Queen of Swords like as many kind of hard femme, high femme, like will cut you um, kinds of imagery because that really comes across for me in the Queen of Swords. So like it's, it's really up to you to figure it out. And the nice thing about all of this, right, is like I think the point that everyone would agree on or everyone who challenges the notion of duality and binary in the tarot would agree with is that whatever it is, there isn't one thing that we can all agree on as a binary. There's not one bucket of masculine and one bucket of feminine um, in the tarot that means the same thing to everyone. That's just really simplistic and definitions of cards that rely on that are really simplistic. And so we have to get beyond and really question for ourselves, like what is creation? What is nurturing? What is uh, intuition, what is manifestation, like, it, we don't have to put them at a point on the map, but sometimes starting with the map can help us to understand what our relationship to the archetype is, and maybe even expand the different ways it might extend out for us. If we start by trying to put it on the map and then look for places where it doesn't apply, we can kind of see all the different, like, boundaries and lack of boundaries of the shape of the archetype um and that's really beautiful to me um and i think it's important too to note you know in the map metaphor i was talking about different perspectives might see it differently um of course anything regarding gender anything regarding any kind of bi binary duality any kind of system or framework is culturally specific and so what I think of as solar or lunar or masculine or feminine is going to be a product of my culture and both in a micro sense, like my very specific culture, my family, my education, and in a broader sense, being a white person, being a trans person, being uh, a person with disabilities, like certain identities and experiences are going to shape how I think of these things, which is why I think it's really awesome to have different people talking about these archetypes and how they see them particularly from mar marginalized perspectives because it gives us more angles on the card and might help us to see something um, that we wouldn't otherwise. So I'm looking forward to talking more about um, tarot cards and, and what my perspective on them is to try to contribute to that. I'd love to you know, see um, videos of people who are doing that as well. I think I'm going to talk next about the High Priestess and the Empress. Um, 
together, but if there are other cards that you would like me to kind of approach from this lens and talk about maybe with a specific emphasis on gender, then let me know in the comments. I would be happy to honor those requests. And if you enjoy this kind of content about gender in the tarot, don't forget to like and subscribe because there'll be plenty more.